Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for many of you's favorite segment. It's my client Emma's vlog, and we are up to number 21. This is now 21 vlogs that we've done with her. Uh, it's quite a few. That's 21 weeks of training of hers that you guys have got to see. You've got to watch her progress as an advanced drug-free female lifter. All right, for our opening conjugate lift for the week, we did banded against mini bands, banded football bar bench. Okay, and that was for her 125 plus the 30 pounds of bands, uh, which was, as she noted, a 10 pound PR. All right, her supplemental work for upper body. We decided we want to work on delts a little bit more. We discussed that last time. We want to bring up her delt surge and that it's strong point for her. She is a former bodybuilder. And you guys have seen pictures of her down at like 105 when she competed. Uh, I've put those up on the Facebook fitness page before. And we're going to work on delts more. But we did flat dumbbell presses. Uh, we did neutral grip pull-ups. And by the way, she got eight reps here. Considering this is a 150-pound woman, that's what she weighs right now. So yeah, she, she's pretty jacked. Keep in mind, she's tall. She's something like 5'6", maybe 5'7". Eight pull-ups. Pretty good. All right, so we're doing that. We're doing overhead press, strict press, which she happens to like this lift. I'll program more of it in for her as a main lift again. Because uh, again, she, she likes this lift. I haven't had her do much of it lately. We should max on it again soon. We did, uh, after that, upright rows. Now, she had, doesn't mess with these really that much, so she had to find the grip that works for hers. And she found, for her, it felt best in her shoulders right around shoulder width. Some people like them closer, some people like them wider. There's research on the different muscles worked on this, depending on what you do. This is actually quite a studied exercise. Uh, you guys have seen me do it, and people will say stuff like, oh, shoulder impingement. Ah, that's been largely debunked. So, her max effort lower this week was sumo deadlift 315. Now, we're counting that lift because she lost her balance and head up and down to the bar. However, we will point out at a powerlifting meet that would have got red lighted for that up and down. But in terms of sheer strength, she had the lift. She lost her balance. Uh, probably a little bit excited to pull the three plates. That was a PR for that lift. But she got it, which means we're going to see it coming up next on her conventional. Because she used to be stronger on conventional. Then I got her to where she can always pull a hair more sumo, so she'll she'll hit a sumo PR. And then next time we try to conventional, she'll hit that same lift on conventional successfully each time. So she's got that 315 deadlift. Uh, then we did Romanian deadlifts, which again, doubling down on her adductor work. Right? Notice her, most of her supplemental stuff does hit the adductors pretty hard. Adductors and glutes. Because again, we've got to keep bringing her thighs up. Uh, the RDL is a great hamstring movement, and the split squat here with the safety bar is a great quad movement. They both work adductors. They both work glutes. Okay, so we're hammering those things. And we finish up with very high rep reverse hypers, which you guys know I'm a fan of, people on conjugate. You know, so people say, Jason, I don't see you doing these that much on 531. A lot of your 531 clients aren't doing them. Well, a lot of my 531 clients don't have access to a reverse hyper. Let's come down to something that, that comes up a lot. People will say, how come some of your people do conjugate and some don't? Uh, I only program conjugate these days. I try to for lifters with a lot of equipment. So if, if I get a lifter who, who really wants to do conjugate, we'll do it without the equipment. It's very equipment intensive. I agree with winning there. If you don't have multiple specialty bars, at least some bands and some equipment, I'd like to see a reverse hyper, stuff like that. Don't run it. Just run 531. You're probably going to get better results. And, and I'm just being being frank here. I'm not saying you won't get great results with well-programmed conjugate because you will. But I think without all the extra equipment, I don't think the system works as well as it could. This is me as a coach who has now years of experience coaching people on conjugate. Her supplemental work on speed lower stayed the same. Of course, she does uh, nine sets of speed bench with three different grips against bands. We don't ever change that. Uh, her speed benching doesn't change. We don't, we don't change anything. We do three sets wide, three sets medium, three sets close grip year round against bands. Okay? Against bands. And notice it's light. I don't even run for speed work. Stuff like 60, 70% is kept super light with a lot of band. 
right? It's not uncommon for me to prescribe 30, 35%, sometimes, sometimes 40% bar weight plus 30% bands or chains. Uh, then she did her neutral grip pull-ups. So we did dumbbell flat press again, neutral grip pull-ups, strict standing press, and upright rows. Again, the entire upper body being worked here, right? Every single muscle, muscle of the upper body's work with an emphasis at the moment towards her shoulders, right? Shoulders and upper back are getting a slight emphasis here. But everything is being worked with enough effective reps and enough sets to stimulate good hypertrophy. Okay, what we're doing here is optimizing shoulder hypertrophy. Because that's the thing when, when we're picking stuff for supplemental lifts, people need to remember we want every muscle to grow. We never want any muscle to not get enough growth stimulus to grow when we train, but we have certain muscles that we will want to focus on for weak points uh, for whatever reason. And those will get a little more stimulus so that they grow a little bit faster because we do have limited recovery resources. And people who think we have unlimited recovery, these are the people who mess up. These are people who struggle. These are people who get hurt. These are people who uh, don't understand why they don't make progress because they're quite frankly training too hard, training too much. Instead of training intelligently, making intelligent use of their recovery resources and picking and choosing where their efforts are, they just train too much. Common noob mistake is people who never get to the advanced phase. All right, so her speed squats, because they didn't, I guess they didn't have a safety bar at this gym she trained at this week for this, this day instead of at home. Uh, she used a straight bar against bands. And we used for her sumo speed pulls, she used straight weight. All right, she used straight weight because they don't have band pegs here. There's a Louie dancing in the background. We'll get some more vlogs up with Louie soon. Louie hasn't, hasn't been doing well the last week or two, so the vlogs have been lacking. But we will very shortly get those up and running again for him, right? Because I know some of you guys miss Louie and his dance moves. But you got some dance moves right there. You got those dance moves, right? You got out on the dance floor right there during her Romanian deadlift. So you got some Louie. And then she finished up with, again, reverse hypers. Fortunately, they have a reverse hyper at the gym she's training at there. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.